All right. Hello, students. I miss you, and I'm so sorry that I can't be here with you today. I will be back tomorrow after the soccer tournament has ended. In the meanwhile, I wanted to make a quick video to explain the virtual lab to you if you are getting stuck. So go ahead and follow along here with me. In about three minutes, I'm going to show you how to complete this assignment. So the first thing you got to do, you have to click on this link in the Google Classroom in order to open up the page where you'll find the information that you need to finish the lab. The page looks like this. It's from the University of Arizona, and it has a lot of really great information about how mitosis happens in an onion root tip. So this is an onion, like the vegetable, and in the roots of that plant, at the very, very end of a root, we're going to find cells that look like this. So this lab is about how many of these cells in one root can be found in the different stages of the cell cycle and mitosis. So in order to answer the first question, you're going to go ahead and read this quick introduction, and that'll give you the information you need to answer number one right here. Now, part two is asking to summarize the three characteristics of these five phases. So we know that interphase is everything that happens in a cell's life that isn't mitosis. So for example, if we read this short piece of information here, we should pick out that the cell is engaged in metabolic activity. That seems important. We should pick out that the DNA is duplicating. That also seems important. And we also want to note that the chromosomes are not clearly discerned. That means you can't clearly see the chromosomes. The DNA still looks like this. It's cloudy. You can't make out these neat chromosome structures that you can see in the other phases. So all you need to do for part two is write the three main characteristics, one, two, three, or you could make them bullet points. So for example, DNA is duplicated. Chromosomes are not yet visible. And cell does its normal functions. So you do not need to copy down all of that information. All you need to do are write three characteristics for each phase. So you're going to go ahead and you're going to do that for each of these phases. And then you're going to make your way to part three. In order to get to part three in the activity, you're going to have to click this next button down at the bottom. And that's going to explain it right here. Now what this says is it's going to show you pictures of cells from the tip of an onion root. You're going to classify each cell based on what phase it is. That means you're going to put it in a bucket. Is it in interphase? Does it go in that bucket? Do you put it in the prophase bucket? Do you put it in the metaphase bucket? What about the anaphase bucket? And in order to do this, you're going to need this little table. You don't need to copy it down. I've made it for you. So when you click next here, it's hard to see, but it's going to show you a cell. It's this tiny little cell right here. So I'm going to go ahead and put a circle around it so that you can see it. And what this is asking us to do is figure out which phase is this cell in. So for example, these black lines here are our chromosomes. Now we want to think in our head, are my chromosomes in the nucleus? Are my chromosomes being pulled apart? Or are my chromosomes in the middle of the cell? Hopefully we can see that these chromosomes are in the middle of the cell. And looking at your characteristics that you wrote on the first page, you can identify that when the chromosomes are in the middle of the cell, that cell's in metaphase. So you're going to go ahead and you are going to click metaphase. When you do that, you will put that cell into the metaphase bucket. Now it's going to give you a new picture. Here we can see that there are not chromosomes. There's only one cell, and we don't really see much of anything going on. So you should think, all right, it's either telophase or interphase. There's no division. I don't see any chromosomes, so it couldn't be these three. Now to figure out whether it's telophase or interphase, we want to think, are there one cell or two cells here? If there are two cells, we know it must be telophase. If there's only one cell, it has to be interphase. So you can identify that's interphase. You're going to click interphase, and it'll put the cell right in there. You're going to go ahead. You're going to keep on clicking through here. You're going to organize all these cells based on the things you can see in the picture. And once you get to the end, it's asking you to count up how many cells you have in each column. So for example, with what I've got here, I would count up one, two, three in interphase. And I'm going to go ahead and put a three into that interface box. Or let's even do this. Let's write it. So I'm going to put a three whoop, into the interface box. Now I remember I had two in prophase, I had one in metaphase, and I had one in anaphase. 
Had I kept going, I would have found enough cells that they would add up to 36. So my total numbers would add up to 36. So for example, to show you what that would look like, let's say that you have 20 cells in interphase, 10 cells in prophase, three cells in metaphase, two cells in anaphase, and one cell in telophase. Now, the next thing we need to do here is calculate the percent of cells that are in interphase. So it gives you instructions right here, and it tells you that if you have nine cells in interphase, you need to divide that by the total number of cells. So nine cells divided by 36 total cells, we got that number from right here, is going to give us 0.25. Now that's your percentage right there, 0.25, but if you want to report it as a neat number, this 25%, what you're going to do is you're going to move that decimal point over 2 by multiplying by 100. So you'll divide the number of cells in interphase by the total number of cells, and then you'll multiply that number by 100. What that's going to give you is 0.25 times 100, 25%. And that means that 25% of cells are in that phase. So for example, in interphase, we know that there are 20 cells, so I'm going to divide 20 by 36. If I do that math, I'll get a number around 55. And if I want to make that a neat 55, I'll multiply it by 100. That's going to move that decimal point over 2 and give me... a neat 55% right here. Now I would go ahead and I would do that calculation for each one of these, dividing the number of cells in that phase by the total and then multiplying by 100. I would get the rest of my percentages and they would add up to 100% because this is saying that 55% of these cells are in interphase. X percent of the cells are in prophase. Y percent of the cells are in metaphase and on and on. Now the last thing this is asking me to do here is figure out, well, how much time are cells going to spend in interphase? How much time are cells going to spend in prophase? If we know that 55% of the cells are currently in interphase, we can calculate that by multiplying the hours in a day, 24 hours, by the percent of cells that are currently in that phase. So we want to find what's 55% of 24. In order to do that, I can't just multiply 55 by 24 because that's going to give me a humongous number, something like 13,000 or 1,300, excuse me, and 31. We know that that's way more than 24. There can't be 1,300 hours in a day, so that number must not be right. So we should be thinking in our head, something went wrong there. What we need to do instead is multiply 24 by the decimal 0.55. What 0.55 is essentially saying is, what are 55 hundredths of 24? So rather than using this 55%, I'm going to use that original decimal I got. Point, whoops. Point 0.55 times 24. And what that's doing is that's saying, well, what are 55 hundredths of 24, or what's 55% of 24? That's going to give me a number around 13.3. What that means is that 13 hours of the day, 13 out of 24 hours, are spent in interphase. I would then continue to do that for each phase, and I could figure out how many hours is a cell going to spend every day in prophase? How many hours will it spend in metaphase? What about anaphase and what about telophase? So once you have counted the number in each phase, you will figure out the percent of time that there, sorry, excuse me, the percent of cells that are in that phase. And then you'll use that percentage to figure out how many hours of the day are cells going to spend in each phase. Once you've got those numbers, and for the sake of the example, let me just go ahead and fill these in. Let's say that it's 13 and 6, uh, let's go with 2 and 2 
and one right there. So let's say that these are our numbers. That's how many hours a day the cell is going to spend in each of these phases. The last thing I'm going to have to do here is make a bar graph with those numbers. So this bar graph is asking me to represent the time spent in each phase. That means that I need to show them how much time is spent in each of those five phases. So I should be thinking, I need something on a y-axis and I need something on an x-axis. One of those things needs to be time spent, one needs to be the phases. So I'm going to go ahead and put over here on my y-axis, time spent. So I'll do two hours, four hours, six hours, eight hours, I'll skip 10 because I can't fit it in there, 12 hours, and up here 14 hours. So I'm going to label my y-axis time spent. I'm going to label my x-axis phases. And I know that I have five phases. So for example, on the left, and I'm going to abbreviate it right now for the sake of time, I would put my interphase. Then I would put my prophase. Then I would put my metaphase, my anaphase, and my telophase. So now I'm showing each phase and I'm showing the time spent. What I need to do are take those numbers that I had in my chart on the last table, or on the last page, excuse me, the numbers that I had in the table on the last page, excuse me, and I'm going to make a bar for each phase to show how much time is spent in that phase. So for example, I had 13 hours spent in interphase. So I'm going to go ahead and make a bar here that goes up to 13 to show that the cell is spending 13 hours in interphase. And if you want, you can do this with colors and you can color it in when you're done. That's going to make it a really easy way to see how much time a cell spends in each phase. Next, I'm going to do prophase. So I would go back to the page before, figure out how many hours the cell spends in prophase. And then I would go ahead and make my bar here. We remember that it spent six hours in prophase. So I would make my little six hour bar. And I would shade that in. It spent two hours in metaphase, two hours in anaphase, and one hour in telephase. So I would make my bars, I would shade them in. And what I am now showing is how much time is spent in each phase of mitosis and the cell cycle. So every cell is going to spend approximately 13 hours in interphase, approximately six hours in prophase, two hours in metaphase, two hours in anaphase, and one hour in telophase. And this is cool because I can see over the course of a day, for example, for some of the cells in my body, how long might they be spending just existing, replicating their DNA, and going through their regular metabolic processes. Then I can figure out how long are they going to spend dividing, how long of that will be spent in prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and then finally telophase when they split. And the last thing you're going to do at the bottom of this page is answer two quick questions about the graph that you have made. So once you're done with that, you will answer question two, you will answer question three, and you'll either turn this in by the door or take it home and finish it for homework and turn it in tomorrow at the beginning of class. It should be a very interesting assignment. I hope you have fun. If you get stuck, ask the sub for help. Ask each other. I miss you guys, and I hope you have a great day.